Hello, we're here on location with Joe Cornish and we're looking at a product that uh, I received from uh, Chris Island. He's of, the of phase one. Of phase one. Um, and it's a lens cast calibration kit. Now, I know you've used lens cast calibration kits before with the uh, IQ and P45 systems, um, but not with an SLR, um, which we're going to try it out with today because this is, uh, this is something new that Chris Island has been talking about. Um, and if you can give an introduction to what it does and how you've used it with the uh, phase cameras. I will. Um, it, it's, a, it's a very simple uh, device. It's, it's literally just a semi-translucent piece of, of white plastic. Um, but in combination with Capture One software, it enables the photographer to eliminate one color cast, two vignetting, and in a very progressive way, yeah. and three dust, sensor dust. Yeah. Uh, and, and it does it very, very easily. Uh, it's extremely effective with a medium format back, yeah. uh, and it's essential actually for yeah. wide angle lenses. Um, but it has benefits also with, uh, with smaller cameras. Yeah, because all, all of the digital cameras suffer a little bit when you're using, typically it's using wide angle lenses, isn't it? When the, when the light hits the sensor at a very acute angle, you can get uh, color casts. You can get, and they are noticeable, um, but most of the time they don't seem that bad. However, uh, whether today we're gonna see it or not, it's hard to, hard to say, but with yes. very neutral subjects, so snow, particularly, um, or very grey uh, flat lighting, uh, casts can become quite noticeable, especially towards the edges. Yeah. Uh, typically they're green and magenta. So I know I know we've used a very wide lens on a side-by-side a -side panorama of some snow recently, mm -hmm. uh, blown up against the wall. Yep. Uh, and without the lens cast calibration, that was, that was a lot of colours going on around the picture. Right. But as soon as you put the lens cast calibration on, it's the awesome. whole thing popped back again. So. So we, we, we don't have many very wide angle lenses with us today, but we're trying it with a, uh, a Nikon 24 inch, 24 millimeter, uh, I'm in a large format <laughs> mode again, uh, on the Nikon D800. Uh, and we'll also try it out on, I have a 12 to 24 Sigma lens on the Sony A900. And that's probably where we're gonna see the most significant yeah. cast. But, uh, but yes, that's what we're gonna do, is go ahead and do a test based on those. So uh, how, how do we use them? This, uh, this it's very simple, almost alarmingly simple. Uh, it can be used in two ways, and, and I've got a setup here to illustrate the, the two options. Uh, if you're using a grad, which of course most of us landscape photographers will do from time to time, uh, with the grad or without. In fact, one of the things we're hoping to be able to map is whether, I mean, especially lead grads, as we know, are very good, generally very neutral, but sometimes they do, they will go off a little bit over yeah. time, subjected to UV light, and then the cast uh, calibration system can also eliminate, we believe, or it can eliminate any color cast from them. So if we just use that uh, process to begin with, um, hopefully, I'll just do a, shoot a quick test. We'll shoot the picture so that we have a, a reference image. Yep like that. Uh, typically the the white plastic does take a lot of light out so so here we have a thirtieth of a second and I'm going to go down to an eighth. So it's uh, two stops pretty much. Is for it? this yeah just to see if that works so I'll just quick test here. Quick playback and that would appear to be well, near enough, it'll probably go to a sixth of a second. Uh, so we're, we're looking at something brightish but nowhere near clipping. What we're trying to do is to, is to keep it on the bright side yeah. as well. Chris tells me it's, and I can understand from a kind of uh, digital point of view, you, you're trying to work towards the top end of the histogram, but you definitely don't want to be clipping. And that looks ideal. So should we try that with a with leaf filter as we'll well? We'll do with the leaf filter as well. See how that will work? Yeah. Um, and I know I have a, a sing ray filter I'd like to try it out with as well, so. Okay. And again, there Is that we are. And, and, and that, so that shows immediately the histogram changes shape and you get ah, a little okay. kind of yeah. shadow effect down the bottom. Um, however, uh, and, w and we can illustrate all that with accompanying images. Yeah. Um, but that's all that's required. You literally just put it in front of you, hold it flat against the lens yeah. or against the filter. You don't want holder. any light leaking in the sides of it, do you? No, I mean, today's yeah. not problematic because there's no direct sunlight. If you, had a, if you had direct sunlight, then it's usually best to try and shade, shade it. Yeah, yeah. Into how, how good is it at the, the dust removal? Because I, I, I didn't realize it did that. And that's yeah. quite um, 
you know, empirically, I've never really tried to test it. I just, I just click dust removal, and it all goes as right. far as I can tell. So it, so it removes. It, it won't seems remove very to. chunky stuff, but if you've got a lot of specks and things, it should get rid of them. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm sure my sensor is probably covered in dust, so we can give that a try. F22. Certainly, there. I think D3 users will be particularly interested in it because uh, the D3 doesn't have a dust removal system. Oh, okay. And, right. and any any uh, camera that doesn't is very very prone to them, as we know, and especially if you use zoom lenses, which would typically suck in quite a lot of yes, that, uh, dust that push pull yeah, type zooms, especially. Well, what we'll do now is we'll use uh, we'll try this on the Sony, and we'll try it with a couple of different grads, and the rest of the details will be in the rest of the article.